Hallelujah. Freedom does not come without a battle. Hello. The word says that the truth will set you free, but if you're not practicing the truth, you ain't free. Revelation 12, something that we've not talked about, have we? <laughs> Glory. Revelation 12, verse 7. Thank you, Jesus. And it says in war. How many of y'all know what war is? It's a fight. It's battle. War broke out in heaven. Michael and his angels fought with the dragon, and the dragon and his angels fought. But they did not prevail, nor was a place found for them in heaven any longer. So the great dragon was cast, or, or the great dragon was cast out, that serpent of old, He's got multiple names. Amen. He's also called the devil and Satan. And there's something that he does very, very good. He deceives. Come on, read it with me. He does what? He deceives the whole world. He was cast to the earth and his angels were cast out with him. In other words, this deception is called false reality. It's a false reality. People are still living in a false reality. We want a true reality. Amen? We want the truth. We must be seekers of the truth and seekers of reality, of what is real and what is not real. Amen? Now, the enemy's purpose is to keep us in a false reality. In other words, a fantasy. False hope. When he can get you in a false hope, he can bring you great discouragement. Hallelujah. Verse 10. It says, Then I what? I heard a loud voice saying in heaven, Now salvation and strength in the kingdom of our God and the power of his Christ. The power of his Christ has come. For the accuser of our brethren who accused them before our God, day and night has been cast down. And it says, and they overcame them by the blood of the Lamb. You know, the blood of the Lamb is activated by repentance. And by the word of their testimony. And they did not love their lives to death. Now, the words that came out of their mouth. And they didn't love their lives to death. Amen? So they ever overcame the false reality through, of this, through their deceptive influence. And it, and it plays with people's egos, desires, hopes, perceptions, emotions, thoughts. Amen? It plays with them. So it keeps an individual in a false reality. So here's something very powerful. We got what we call AI. It's called artificial. It's artificial. That means it's a false reality. Artificial intelligence. It means it's a false intelligence. Listen. There's a lot of religions in this country, but there's only one God. And his name is Jesus the Christ. There's a lot of religions, man. They got all of their foolish idols and gods and goddesses. And, but there's only one God in this country who established this country. And his name is Jesus Christ. So you got to remember something, that all this artificial intelligence, fake, deceptive, false reality, <laughs> people are taken captive in this. Anyone can step into this false reality. Many people now, that's called virtual reality, that's just false reality, they can buy these machines and whatever, put them on their heads and whatever, and, and they're... They, and, their thrills and pleasures for hours and hours are living a whole nother reality. That's how the devil wants to keep us. He doesn't want us to walk in a true reality. Because if you walk in a true reality, you will expose him. Hello. Many souls are taken captive. And in this 
false reality. They are under the enemy's control. Has everybody got it? In 2 Timothy 3, teaching is called true reality. In other words, they are seekers of what is real and what isn't. Second Timothy three. Hallelujah. In verse one, let's speak it together. Just think about how many people have been taken captive in a false reality right now. If they would seek the truth and be seekers of true reality, they wouldn't be doing all the stupid stuff they're doing. They wouldn't be under the control of the enemy with medications and so forth. Remember we talked about pharmacia, which is witchcraft. People are under all of these medications. That's what the enemy does. That's why they want socialism. Socialism hands out pills like they do water. It's free. Oh, go get a pill. It's an answer for everything. A pill. Drugs. Look at what drugs do. LSD. Mescaline. Man, they put you in a false reality. You can go there for weeks. I've been there. Honey, I'll be right home two weeks later. Where you been? I don't know. <laughs> Just went to go get milk. Hallelujah. But know this in verse 1. That in the last days, perilous times will come. How? These perilous times are because of false realities. For men will be lovers of themselves, lovers of money, boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy, unloving, unforgiving, slanderers, without self-control, brutal despisers of good, traitors, headstrong, haughty, lovers of what? That means lovers of false reality rather than lovers of God. Having a form of godliness but denying its power from some people do what? Turn away. They're lovers of pleasure. It's a false reality. They're not lovers of true reality. Again, drugs, medications, pain pills. Look what a pain pill does to a person. Does it cure you? No. It deceives you. Amen? <laughs> it deceives the body. <coughs> Praise God. False reality. In other words, we are seekers of true reality only through Jesus Christ, through the blood of his cleansing, to the connection of his spirit, can we walk in true reality. That's why the Father says, I look for those who will worship me in truth and spirit. See, you can't worship him in truth and spirit unless you're broke free from here. You first must come to the end of yourself here. Nothing comes to a new beginning unless it dies. Jesus told us that. Even the seed must die so that it can grow. Amen? That's why he gave us a formula of a new life. Deny yourself. Deny your old reality. Deny the false reality and pick up the new one. Genesis 3. You know, it's in us. It's in us. When we were born, it's in us. We are wanted to know who we are, why we're here, and where we're going. In other words, we are looking for true reality. What the heck am I doing here? When I finally became got senses of, whoa. I'll never forget after I got born again. I'm driving down the road and the sunroof was open. I'm looking up in the air and all of a sudden it hit me. Dear God, I'm on a planet. 
That was a reality for me. Because see, you're, we're so caught into everything, we don't get to see everything. But through the Spirit of God, all of a sudden you realize, dear God, I'm living on a planet. It's called Earth. I could have been on any other planet, but I'm living on this one. Like, how did I get here? I remember one day the Lord was talking to me. He said, I sent you there. I don't care how you, how you think you came in here. I sent you here. And I had this strange vision like we're all in heaven. Because it says he knew us before we came. He knew us before we were. And it was like everybody was gathered around him. And he was saying, look, we got trouble on earth. Who would like to go for me? I will, I will. Everybody volunteered. But he said, listen, here's the problem. You will forget everything. You'll forget being with me. You'll forget about all of this stuff. You'll have no memory of it. Until you are born again and reconnected to me. Then you'll be my son again. But you will always be my son. But when you come into this realm, we're disconnected. But you must be born to the, of the Spirit to be reconnected to me. Then you will know who you are again. Now your true identity will come forth. See, because in a false reality, there's false identity. You want to become everything in that, in that false reality. When you're growing up, you want to be that professional player, that dancer, that guitar player, that rock star. <laughs> you wanted to be a, a policeman, a fireman, an attorney. You wanted to be the president. You wanted to be somebody, but you already were. See, because you were disconnected from home, you truly didn't have your identity. And we lived in a false reality. We've been looking for us the whole time we were here. But we were looking for him. But we didn't know that, though. We were trying to find ourselves. Heck, now if you get born again, you need to lose yourself. Like bury it even. Hallelujah. In Genesis 3, in verse 1, let's speak it together. Now the serpent was what? More cunning than any beast of the field which the Lord had God had made. Now beasts is also associated with fallen angel. And he said to the woman, has God indeed said you shall not eat of every tree of the garden? He always challenges you what God says. That's his job. But if you're caught up in a false reality, you'll accept everything. Oh, really? Oh, see, doubt will come. That will disconnect you. Well, I have my own way of thinking. That's too bad. And you'll continue to think that way and be caught up in a false reality and never hit the true reality. You'll never know who you are in Christ. You may think you might, but you'll never really know. And a woman said to the serpent, we may eat of the tree, of the fruit of the trees of the, of the garden, but the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden, God has said you shall not eat it, nor shall you touch it, lest you die. Then the serpent said to the woman, you shall not truly die. In other words, you've been lied to. For God knows that in a day you eat, your eyes will be opened, and you will be like God, knowing good and evil. Well, she was already like God. He was made, she was made in his image. He knew. He knew that he could get her out of the true reality into a false one if, they would, if she would partake of what he required. Does everybody get it? Why? Because when they partook, what happened? Her eyes were actually shut to the spirit realm. Remember, they walked with God face to face. They saw the angels. The angels were under authority of Adam. Adam finally got laborers for the garden. Like Adam was made just to till the garden. Come on, man. Like God didn't have enough money to pay for laborers to come and take care of the garden? Not, Adam was not created to take care of that. That's all symbolic in the area where God was training up someone in his image and likeness to think like him, to speak like him, and to walk like him. What other place was there? In the garden. It was called the training center. It was a school for Adam and Eve. 
but you can't learn what is love, what is righteousness, without having evil there to challenge you. Amen? They want to be overtaken. They're eternal. But God was training them. But the moment they partook of the requirements of the serpent, they became blinded. They could no longer see the serpent no more. And that's what he wanted. He wanted to be, the Adam and Eve to be taken out of the true reality so they couldn't see their enemy anymore. And they were now put in a false reality. Now from that point on, they've been blinded. Everyone born in this world is blinded to the true reality. That's why you must be born again. That's why the scales will come off eventually when you're filled with the Spirit. See, accepting Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior allows you in. Then there's the process of being freed. Some people aren't willing to accept that. They just accept salvation and that's it. I'm good. But they're still blinded. Hello? Is everybody okay? The devil portrays a false reality and false hope to exchange the true reality for a lie under his control of thought emotion, and desire. I'm going to say those three things. He wants you to exchange the true reality for a false one so that he can come, that you come under his control of thought. Come on, write it. Of what? Thought, emotion, and desire. When that happens, he has you in control. Thought, what is it? Emotion, and desire. They'll be on your quiz at the end of the day. First John chapter 2. Think about that. If he's got control over your thoughts... Your feelings and your desires, you're a slave. Oh, glory. First John chapter 2. Is everybody there? Verse 15. What does it say? Do not what? Do not love the world system. Who's under the control? Who controls the world system? Satan. Or the things in the world. If anyone loves the world, the love of the Father is not there. For all that is in the world, the what? The lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life is not of the Father, but is of the what? The world. In other words, you might as well say the matrix. Lust. Living under satanic torment. Why? Because he's got control over thoughts, emotions, and what? Desire. Lust is a false reality. And living under a satanic torment or desire to have only... <laughs> our desire is to only have the anointing. We must... Now... Having the anointing and having an activated anointing is two different things. Let's go a little further on this. Verse 17, the world is passing away in the lust of it. So those who are caught in the lust, which is a false reality, is also going to pass away. Amen? But he who does the will of God abides forever. He who lives in the true reality will abide forever. Little children, is the last hour and you have heard that the Antichrist is coming. Even now many Antichrists have come, by which we know that it is the last hour. They went out from us, but they were not of us. For they had been of us, they would have continued with us. But they got taken captive and sold out the true reality for a false one. Usually by what? Lust. They would have continued with us, but they went out that they might be made manifest that none of them were of us. But you have an anointing from the Holy One, and you know what? You know all things. You know all things. Again, only the anointing, the activated anointing of the upright, true worshipers, true seekers, 
truth seekers, those that have a true repentant heart and true desire to deny themselves are truly connected. I'm going to say that again. Because see, a lot of people think they're connected and they're not. Because they wouldn't be doing the things they do. Amen? They'd be able to see things through. Again, I'm going to say this again. The anointing, the activated anointing, is granted to those who are upright, true worshipers. They're true seekers, truth seekers. They have a carry, they carry a true repentant heart. They live a life of true denial of self. And they will be truly connected. They're the ones that overcome. They overcome. Why? Because it's the anointing that overcomes all things. Even the gates of hell cannot prevail against the anointing of God. See, religion can't do any of that stuff. There's no activation in religiosity. Activation comes through the presence of God. In John chapter 8. If you don't come into God's presence with a true repentant heart, what happens? Nothing. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> you can't come in God's presence without turning away from what God disapproves of. Amen. You ain't going to get nothing. You'll stay right where you are. But familiar spirits will come and tell you, you're anointed. You're anointed from hell. Glory. John chapter 8. Gospel of John. Oh, happy days. John 8, 42. Let's speak it, please. Is everybody there? Jesus said to them, if God were your father, you would love me. Now, what does the word say? If you love him, you'll what? Obey him. Amen. That's the sign of loving him. And, okay, uh, if you love, if, okay, you obey him. For I proceeded forth and came from God, nor have I come of myself, but he sent me. Why do you not understand my speech? Because you are not able to listen to my word. You can't interpret what I say because his words are spiritual. You are of your father the what? The devil. And the desires of your father you want to do. He was a murderer, fornicator from the beginning. He was rebellious and a liar. And does not stand in the truth because there is no truth in him. When he speaks a lie, he speaks from his own resources for he is a liar and the father of it. Does everybody see that? He is a liar. In other words, when people are taken captive in this, in this false reality, they are unable to interpret or understand the ways, the thoughts, and the desires of Christ. One of the things is this, you know, Paul always said we need to know the mind of Christ. That means the thoughts of God. As children, we should know how he thinks. Doesn't mean you're going to know every single thing, amen? The word tells us that we should know how to live our lives that please God. That means you know how He thinks. He doesn't have to, you don't have to wait for God to tell you something all the time. You should know what He thinks, amen? You know what pleases Him, what doesn't please Him. Amen? Praise God. Let's go somewhere else. 1 Corinthians chapter 2. You know, one of the things that the Bible says is earnestly desire the gifts of the Spirit. In other words, you must have a desire for things. God ain't giving you something you're not desiring. Oh, Lord, I'd like the gifts. That's nice. Why don't you come and get them? 
well, I really don't really, you know. If you wanted me to have them, you just throw them on me. No. When you earnestly desire means you seek after. You seek after. Hallelujah. See, too many people are seeking the wrong things in the wrong places. 1 Corinthians chapter 9, I mean chapter 2, or 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 9. Let's speak it together. But as it is written, I has not seen nor ear heard, nor have entered into the heart of man the things which God has prepared for those who what? For those who what? If you love them, you obey them. If you love them, you'll follow them. Amen? So there's a special things that God has for these individuals that are true seekers, true repenters. Amen? But God has revealed them to us through his what? Spirit. Now, the spirit does not associate with sin. It doesn't associate with rebellion. Amen? For the spirit searches all things, yes, the deep things of God. So you want deep revelations of God, you've got to have clean hands, a pure heart, and a pure conscience. Amen? You've got to live a life that's pleasing to God. Or you won't get deep revelations from God. Does everybody get this? All right. It says, verse 11, For what man knows the things of a man except the spirit of the man which is in him? Even so, no one knows the things of God except the spirit of God. Now we have received not the spirit of the world, but the spirit who is from God, that we might know the things. That word might means you must cooperate. That we might know the things that have been freely given to us by God. These things we speak, we also speak, not in words which man's wisdom teaches, but which the Holy Spirit teaches, comparing spiritual things with spiritual. But the natural man ain't going to get it. Does not receive the things of the Spirit of God. Does everybody get this? See, you can, Jesus, even Paul rebuked a bunch of believers. He said, you're still carnal. You're still babies. 30 years and you're still a stinking baby. Does everybody get it? He said, I can't speak to your spiritual children. You're still carnal. You still have thoughts. You still have desires. Your emotions. You're a mess. What's the matter for you? He told him that. He said, man, I, I gave you meat. You puked it. I can only give you milk now. You can't live and grow on milk. Amen? You must have meat. But the natural man does not receive the things of the Spirit of God, for they are foolishness to him. In other words, it can't be interpreted. Nor can he know them because they are what? Spiritually discerned. But... He who is spiritual judges all things. He judges, why? Because he's living in a true reality, not a false one. He knows all things. Oh, yes. Yet he himself was rightly judged by no one. Because God is his judge. There's relationship. For who has known the mind of the Lord or the thoughts of the Lord? That he may instruct him. But we have the what? The thoughts and the mind of Christ. But if there's not a fellowship and communication, you're not going to have them. Amen? Where spiritual discernment is the ability to maintain an awareness and awakenedness of what is of God and what is fake. To live in the spirit is a life of true reality. The ability to see beyond the natural. The ability to what? See beyond the natural. That's why you ask yourself, who told me that? Why do I feel this way? I'm going to search it out. You don't just go, oh, I'll just think whatever, I'll say whatever I think, and I'll just take whatever I feel. I'll do it. You know, that's Satan's doctrine, do what you feel like. I mean, that's how we lived in B.C., right? Before Christ, we, we lived by, basically by how we felt. Oh, I got a gut feeling. <laughs> I'm getting out of here. Junior's got a gut feeling. Let's get out of here. Galatians 3.
You know how many times you, you knew when you were in the world and something occurred and you said, man, you know, I knew I shouldn't have done that or I knew whatever. I, there was a knowing within you. But you couldn't interpret it. You couldn't grab it and bring it out in front of you. Because it's spiritually discerned. Amen? And because we were carnal, we couldn't understand the things that what God was trying to tell us. And Galatians 3 verse 1, let's speak it. Oh, foolish Galatians, who has what? Bewitched you, deceived you. Be bewitched you that you should not obey the what? The truth. Before whose eyes Jesus Christ was clearly portrayed among you as crucified. This only I want to learn from you. Did you receive the Spirit by the works of the law or by the hearing of faith? Are you so stupid or so foolish? <laughs> Having begun in the Spirit, are you now being made perfect in the flesh? Oh, man. Bewitched into a false reality involving self-preservation. Bewitched into a false reality involving self-preservation, unable to walk in the power of surrender. Ooh. I'm enjoying this tonight. I love Fresh Rama. Bewitched, deceived into a false reality involving self-preservation. Unable to walk in the power of surrender. Maintained by a false perception and interpretation of things. It's maintained by a what? False perception and interpretation of things. Self-preservation. That's called survival mode. Not surrender. Ezekiel 28. Ezekiel 28, yeah, let's start at verse 1. The word of the Lord came to me again, saying, Son of man, say to the prince of Tyra, thus says the Lord God, because your heart is lifted up, and you say, I am a God, I sit in the seats of God, in the midst of seas, yet you are a man and not a God. Though you set your heart is the heart of God. Behold, you are wiser than Daniel. There is no secret that can be hidden from you. With your wisdom and your understanding, you have gained riches for yourself and gathered gold and silver into your treasures. By your great wisdom and trade, you have increased your riches and your heart is lifted up because of your riches. Because of your what? Riches. This is how many the well, wealthy people think. I'm not going to say all of them, but the rulers, like the Clinton family and Bidens and, you know, the Obamanites and all of them, because of their great wealth, they believe they're gods. Verse 6, therefore, thus says the Lord God, because you have set your heart as the heart of a god, behold, therefore, I will bring strangers against you, the most terrible of the nations. And they shall draw their swords against the beauty of your wisdom. And defile your splendor. They shall throw you down into the pit. And you shall die the death of the slain. In the midst of the seas. You will still say before him who, say, who slays you. I am a God. But you shall be a man and not a God. In the hand of him who slays you. You shall die the death of the uncircumcised. By the hand of, the, of aliens. For I have spoken says the Lord God. Verse 11. So that was the word for the prince of Tyra. Moreover, the word of the Lord came to me saying, Son of man, take up a lamentation for the king of Tyra. Now I want you to know that there's a parallel here because these princes and kings are not only physical positions, but they are spiritual positions. Amen? You were the seal of perfection. Well, there wasn't a man a seal of perfection. But there was one created by God Almighty called Lucifer. Full of what? Wisdom and perfect and beauty. You were in Eden, the garden of God. Every precious stone was your covering. Why were the stones his covering? Because he was there when God created the earth. 
The sardius, topaz, and diamond, braille, onyx, jasper, sapphire, turquoise, emerald with gold. The workmanship of your timbrels and pipes was prepared for you on the day you were created. Why? Because he's a praise and worship leader of the universe. You were the anointed cherub. Here's the spiritual part of him. Who covers the universe with praise. I establish you. You were on the holy mountain of God, which was known as the earth. You walked back and forth in the midst of the fiery stones when God created it. You were perfect in your ways from the day you were created till iniquity was found in you. By the abundance of your trading, you became filled with violence within. And you sinned. Therefore, I cast you as a profane thing out of the mountain of God, and I will destroy you, O covering cherub, from the midst of the fiery stones. Your heart was lifted up because of your beauty. You corrupted your wisdom for the sake of your splendor. I cast you to the ground and lay you before kings that they may gaze at you. You defiled your sanctuaries by the multitude of your iniquities, by the iniquity of your trading. Therefore, I brought fire from, from your midst to devour you. I will turn you to ashes upon the earth in the sight of all who saw you. All who knew you among the peoples are astonished of you. You have become a horror. And shall be no more forever. Now we know this is prophetic to come. Amen. Now he's talking about Lucifer. But he's also talking about prince, principalities and kings. Physical and spiritual. Does everybody understand it? So the prince and the king of Tyre that hold physical and spiritual positions. And the demonic kingdom. God says I'm going to destroy. But they're still there. We're battling against it. Does everybody understand? Now, there's something very powerful about this. Because we've been talking about the Python spirit, the Jezebel, and so forth. Or they join forces and so forth. Now, go to 1 Kings 18. And verse 15. It says, then Elijah said, as the Lord of hosts lives before whom I stand, I will surely present myself to him today. So Obadiah went to meet Ahab and told him. And Ahab went to meet Elijah. Now Ahab and Jezebel are married. Amen. Then it happened when Ahab saw Elijah that Ahab said to him, is that you, O troubler of Israel? And he answered, I have not troubled Israel, but you and your father's house have, and that you have forsaken the commandments of the Lord and have followed the Baals. Now, therefore, send and gather all Israel to me on Mount Carmel, the 450 prophets of Baal and 400 prophets of Asherah who eat at Jezebel's table. And Ahab sent all the children of Israel and gathered the prophets together on Mount Carmel. Now, this is where Elijah called down fire, amen, and destroyed it. And then they, he killed all of them. But again, here's a, Jezebel and Ahab. Now, all of these prophets were sitting at the table of Jezebel. So you're talking 850 of them total. Now, you got to think about something here because it's pretty powerful. She is the daughter of King Tyra, who we just talked about. She was the daughter of King Tyra. Does everybody understand that? Jezebel was the daughter of King Tyra, who we just talked about. That was her daughter, his daughter, who carried. <laughs> she is the daughter of King Tyra and married Ahab, the king of Israel. Causing a corporate alliance. She had permission to worship Baal. Because it was her native God. In her new home of Samaria. As queen over Israel allowed for demonic influence. She wanted Baal to be equal to Yahweh. The word Jezebel means no cohabitant without obligation. 
a fantasy space of personality and lifestyle, only loyal to itself. This spirit is operating in the souls of humanity and holds seats and positions in this country that are rebellious to Christ and his rule. This started aggressively. There was an aggressive move with this when Jezebel and Ahab were together in the physical of the Clinton regime. We saw Jezebel and Ahab with the Clinton marriage. It's been passed on. It's been going down. All the way until Trump, there was a delay. Does everybody understand it? That's why he's the Lord's trumpet. There was a delay. In Acts 9, verse 10. So Jezebel brought all her prophets and all her idols and altars into Israel. You know, Ahab is weak. That's an area of weakness. So that spirit draws on weakness. Acts 9, when I say Acts 9, please, verse 10. Is everybody there? Now there was a certain disciple of Damascus named Ananias. And to him the Lord said in a vision, Ananias. And he said, Here I am, Lord. So the Lord said to him, Arise and go to the street called Straight and acquire the house of Judas for one called Saul of Tarsus. For behold, he is praying. And in a vision he has seen a man named Ananias coming in and putting his hand on him so that he might receive his sight. Then Ananias answered, Lord, I have heard from many about this man, how much harm he has done to your saints in Jerusalem. And here he has authority from the chief priest to bind all who call on your name. But the Lord said to him, Go, for he is a chosen vessel of mine to bear my name before the Gentiles, kings, and the children of Israel and the United States. For I will show him ma how many things he must suffer for my name's sake. Let me tell you, Donald Trump has suffered many things. This is Donald Trump. He's a chosen vessel of the Lord. It was prophesied since 2013 about him. And it continues. But people that do not understand that are still in false reality will never see that. They'll still look at the old man of Donald Trump, not the new man. Amen? Again, all of this stuff, the Jezebel, the Ahab, doctrines of demons, all the prophets. Because think, think about this. Where are all the prophets of Baal now? They're in the news media. Because they're false prophets. They're releasing things that are putting people in bondage. Those are their altars. And what are they utilizing? AI. Artificial intelligence to keep people in a False reality. Does everybody understand that? First Peter chapter 5. Listen. The Bible tells us something very powerful. Be careful who you associate with. A bad company corrupts what? Good habits. Why? Because it's coexistence. Of those that are rebellious will coexist together. And those that are against it will coexist. So you have righteous coexistence and you have unrighteous coexistence. And it will continue to increase more and more and more. First Peter chapter 5. First Peter 5, 5. Glory. Is everybody there? Let's speak it together. Likewise, you younger people, do what? Submit yourselves, your elders. Yes, all of you be submissive to one another and be clothed with what? Humility. That means respect one another. For God resists the proud. Proud is rebellious. Amen? But he gives grace. He gives revelation. He gives more of his plan. He gives the deep things of God, the hidden mysteries to those who are what? 
humble. Therefore, humble yourselves under the mighty hand of God, that he may what? Exalt you in due time. Cast in your care upon him, for he cares for you. It says, be sober, which means alert. Be vigilant, which means consistent. Because your adversary, the devil, walks about like a roaring lion, seeking whom he may devour. Resist him steadfast in the faith, knowing that the same sufferings are experienced by your brotherhood in the world. Now, all your challenges, everything that you're going through, no matter what it is, is to bring you to a higher level of integrity and relationship with Christ. But may the God of all grace, who called us to his eternal glory by Christ Jesus, after you have what? Suffered a while, perfect you, establish you, strengthen you, and settle you. The challenges to expose, remember, these challenges are expose your enemies also, and to bring you to another level of higher existence and presence with God. Be humble to get revelation. Revelation does not come through pride. Malachi 3. Glory, let's speak it together, please. Malachi 3, 16. Then those who feared the Lord spoke to one another. In other words, they coexisted together. Those who carried the fear of God. They reverenced, honored, and respected him. And the Lord listened and heard them. So he was there, because it says when two or more are gathered in his name, he's what? He's there. So a book of remembrance was written before him. For those who fear the Lord, who meditate on his name. So there's a book of remembrance of those who reverence, honor, and respect him and his name. He said, they shall be mine, says the Lord of hosts. On the day that I make them my jewels. And I will spare them as a man spares his own son who serves him. Then you shall again discern between the righteous and the wicked, between one who serves God and one who does not serve him. Wow. They feared the Lord, a book of remembrance, talked about him. Not themselves. They talked about him. In Proverbs 2. Start from verse 1. My son, if you receive my words and treasure my commands within you, so that you incline your ear to wisdom and apply your heart to what? Understanding. Yes, if you cry out for discernment and lift up your voice for understanding, if you seek her as silver and search for her as for hidden treasures, then you will understand the fear of the Lord and find the knowledge of God. For the Lord gives wisdom from his mouth come knowledge and understanding. He stores up sound wisdom for the what? Upright. He is a shield to those who walk uprightly. He guards the paths of justice and preserves the way of his saints. Then you will understand righteousness and justice, equity in every good path. When wisdom enters your heart and knowledge is pleasant to your soul, discernment will preserve you. Understanding will keep you to deliver you from the way of evil and from the man who speaks perverse things. From those who leave the path of righteousness to walk in the ways of darkness. Who rejoice in doing evil and delight in the perversity of the wicked. Whose ways are crooked and who are devious in their paths. We need what? Wisdom. Discernment. And understanding. It will not come to those who don't desire it. If there's still sin, rebellion, pride, it will not come. Nothing comes without submission. And I'm going to close in 2 Timothy 2. Start at verse 7. Consider what I say, and may the Lord give you what? Understanding in all things. Remember that Jesus Christ, of the seed of David, was raised from the dead according to my gospel, for which I suffer trouble as an evildoer, even to the point of chains. But the word of God is not chained. 
Therefore I endure all things for the sake of the elect, that they also may obtain the salvation which is in Christ Jesus with eternal glory. This is a faithful saying. If we died with him, we shall also live with him. If we endure, we shall also reign with him. If we deny him, he also will deny us. If we are faithless, he remains faithful. He cannot deny himself. Remind them of these things, charging them before the Lord, not to strive about words to no profit, to the ruin of the hearers. Be diligent to present yourselves approved to God, a worker who does not need to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. But shun profane and idle babblings, for they will increase to a more ungodliness. And their message will spread like cancer. Hymenaeus and Phileas are of this sort, who have strayed concerning the what? Truth, saying that the resurrection is already past, and they overthrow the faith of some. Nevertheless, the solid foundation of God stands having this seal. The Lord knows those who are his, and let everyone who names the name of Christ depart from iniquity. Again, many of people have fallen or have never come out of the false reality, never entered a true reality. Even though they've accepted Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, they just the scales have never been taken off. They've never really stepped through. They've never crossed over. They're still religious. They think that just staying home and being a good person, reading their Bible is okay. They do no warfare. They're not fighters. The only thing they keep warm is their seat. It's a shame. They need the fire of God. They need to be raised up to be warriors. You know, God says, my people are destroyed for lack of what? Knowledge. That knowledge is to bring us into that place where true reality is, where we maintain that. Remember, the enemy's always trying to exchange true reality for a false one. That's his job, and he does it very good. We don't need any more artificial intelligence. Amen? We need true intelligence. Praise God. Praise God. Father, we thank you for your word. We are honored and blessed. We ask that you seal your word tonight with the blood of Jesus and the Holy Spirit and bring to remembrance those things that we may see through the physical and walk in true reality, destroying the false reality that the enemy's been playing for a long time. In Jesus' name. Everybody said amen.